Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the 30th and last episode of the Ramadan series The Daily Revival presented by Serving Islam Team and your brother Isa Ma The book authored by Shaykh Ali Hamouda has 40 chapters And uh, we only shared 30 out of those 40 uh, in Ramadan and if circumstances allow, inshallah, after Ramadan, we may share the last 10 episodes as well. Today's episode is called The Wings of Humility. This is extracted from an ayah in the Quran that really uh, used such a beautiful expression that I believe everyone who uh, comes across it will remember it for good. Allah Azza wa Jalla described how one should treat his or her parents, and he used the following expression, and lower to them your wing of humility. Um, in Chinese, there is an expression like uh, parents would see to their kids that, uh, like, okay, now your wings have become strong, huh? Your wings have become um, hard. And... Uh, that is indicating that, okay, you have grown up and now you want to fly away from me. Now you want to, um, you know, fight for your own life and find your own sky and uh, make your own decisions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that maybe your wings have become strong. Your wings have become very capable. Maybe you have become an eagle. Maybe you have become a leader of a flock of birds. Maybe you will fly to the furthest and highest skies. But in front of your parents, lower your wings for humility. That is the beauty of this expression. And also, when birds lower their wings for a long time, they will drop from the sky. Right? They cannot maintain the elevation if they keep lowering their wings. So this also indicates that in front of your parents, be grounded. Come, on, come back to the ground. Don't fly so high up and... Uh, Make them feel distant from you. In front of your parents, come back to the ground and lower your wings um, because of humility. Our predecessor's fascination with this ayah was not limited to the field of research and verdicts, however, but it governed their everyday interactions with their parents, having raised the bar of good treatment to unimaginably high levels. As for the scholar Abdullah ibn Aoun, his application of this ayah was so great that he included it within his very tone of voice when speaking to his uh, parents. It was mentioned in his biography that his mother once called him, to which he responded in a voice that was louder than hers. Thus, in repentance to Allah, he freed two slaves. What would Abdullah ibn Aoun make of a person today who screams from his room at his mother because his dinner is late or not what he expected or those perhaps who ban their car doors or sound their car horns to hurry their mothers who are taking too long uh, to get ready as the poor lady scrambles around in her house frantically trying to get her matters together fearing the rage and displeasure of her son never mind the tones of voices Imam al-Munawi said, Al-Uquq Kama yakunu bil qawli wal fi'l Yakunu bi mujarrad al-lafz al-mush'ir Bil ghadab He said disobedience to one's parents Is not only through words and actions But also through glances which indicate anger If you look at your parents in a way That hints uh, a little bit of displeasure According to al-Munawi That is disobedience to the parents how huge is the difference between those people who held themselves accountable over the tones of their voices and length of their glances and those of, uh, those of us who scream when they open their drawers and find that their clothes haven't all been washed and ironed on time. Amr ibn Maymun ibn Mahran was traveling with his father in the city of Basra when they came across a paddle that they needed to cross but his father was too weak to walk through it uh, at once, Amr lowered himself into the water, allowing his father to walk on his back and use it as a bridge to cross over. How lucky was the father of Amr, who did not leave to witness a day where 
children find it burdensome to push the wheelchairs of their fathers or mothers, or those who get frustrated due to yet another hospital appointment, which their parents requires. And when he gets there, he spends his time on his phone, making it so apparent that he wishes to be elsewhere. Abu Omar was asked about how his son, Dharf, behaved with him. He responded, ما مشى معي قط في الليل إلا كان أمامي ولا مشى معي في النهار إلا كان ورائي ولا رتقى سقفا كنت تحته Whenever we'd walk together at night, he'd walk in front of me. And whenever we'd walk by day, he'd walk behind me. And never did he enter a room that was above the room I was in. As for Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he would frequently make dua for his parents and dedicated a sum of 20 dinar for charity each month on behalf of them. His mother would at times ask uh, him Islamic questions but would not be convinced by his response, demanding uh, the opinion of Zur al Wa'id. So, this is Imam Abu, Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, one of the um, most knowledgeable person in Islamic hist uh, history, right? And he is certainly an expert uh, and a uh, authority in the field of fiqh. Um, but what happens universally is that uh, no matter how knowledgeable you are, no matter how accomplished you are, no matter how educated you are, to your families, especially to your fa parents, you are always still that little kid. Uh, so chances are they wouldn't take you seriously, uh, despite your knowledge and ex your experiences. So it's actually very difficult to um, convince your own families and uh, uh, you know and uh, give them answers about uh, Islam this happens uh, to modern scholars as well um, and I believe everyone has some degree of such experience so so his mother demanded to see Zura al Wa'id, which is a um, Admonisher, you know, someone who is eloquent, who gives speeches, who delivers the knowledge from scholars to the people through beautiful sermons, etc. Et so he's a wa'id, he's an admonisher, and his mother um, perhaps is more familiar with this uh, public figure, you can say, and demands to ask him. And Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, didn't say, do you know who I am? Like, he's nothing compared to me, by the way. <laughs> I have much more knowledge than him. I am much more reliable than him. He didn't say any of this. Um, he said, okay, sure, let's go. If you want to ask him, let's go ask him. So he accompanied his mother and they went to Zura al Wa'id. And of course, Zura was very uh, surprised. You know, he said, um, you have much more knowledge than me. Why don't you uh, answer her question? Um, Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, would uh, secretly tell him that my answer is such and such. So he would tell his mother, my answer is such and such. Uh, and then he would be she would be satisfied and she would go home. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, did this out of humility towards his mother and out of respect for her and uh, obedience uh, to her. As for Haywa ibn Shuraih, also a, a great scholar who used to teach right in public, and his mother would interrupt him during his teaching and would say, Ya Shuraih, uh, sorry, uh, Ya, ya Haywa, Qum, Qum, A'ti Dajaj al -habb. He would tell him that, Haywa, stand up, stand up, go feed the chicken. Go feed the chicken. And he did not feel shy of this or reserved in the list, uh, but would get up and do so at once. He didn't say, I have a lecture going on. You know, I'm a professor. I am a registered engineer. You know, I am very uh, established in this in this line of work, and uh, you should let me finish. Uh, no, I, I'll go feed chicken if my mom asks me to do so. Uh, so that's what he did. As for Zain al Abidin, the son of Hussein, the son of Ali, radiallahu anhum, uh, anhum ajma'in, he was asked, You are one of the most dutiful people towards your mother, so why do we not see you eating with her from the same plate? He responded, أخاف أن تسبق يدي إلى ما سبقت إليه عينها فأكون قد عققتها. He said, I fear that my hand would reach out to part of the food that she'd intended on eating, and thus becoming in Allah's eyes disobedient to her. يعني I don't want to take something that he that she wanted 
intended to eat. As for Muhammad ibn Sirin, a man once saw him uh, sitting in the company of his mother and uh, was astonished by his appearance, which is, abs uh, which is obviously different from his normal demeanor. So he asked, what is wrong with Muhammad? Is he sick? Is he ill? They responded, لا ولكن هكذا يكون إذا كان عند أمه No, but this is how he behe behaves when he is uh, sat with his mother. Very humble, very obedient. As for Hujr ibn Adi, he would toss and turn on his mother's bed before getting up and leaving it for her. And they'd ask him, why do you do this? What's that for? He would respond, أخشى أن يكون حجر تحت فراشها Just in case there are any stones beneath uh, the covers. I want to uh, try it for her first and make sure it's comfortable. As for Muhammad ibn Munkadir, he had a brother called Umar ibn Munkadir. The former was known for his knowledge, whilst the, the latter was known for his worship. On one particular evening, Umar got up to pray at night, whilst Muhammad spent it massaging the feet of his mother. Muhammad said, Bata Umar yusalli. وَبِتُّ أَغْمِزُ رِجْلَيْ أُمِّهِ وَمَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَنَّ لَيْلَتِي بِلَيْلَتِهِ He said, my, mother's, uh, my brother spent the night worshipping Allah, praying, and I spent it massaging my mother's feet, and I would never exchange my night for his. Yani, I don't think his night is uh, better than mine. <laughs> This was their understanding of lowering the wing of humility to one's parents. Examples that are nothing but a direct product of their deep knowledge of Islam and in-depth understanding of how Allah loves to be glorified and worshipped. Yani, treating your parents with the best treatment is a kind of worship to Allah. You are showing your love for Allah by doing this because this is a command of Allah Azza wa Jal. Their practice of Islam was not superficial, limiting it to the apparent outward acts of worship, but their religiosity was very real. They realized that any act of worship, pursuit of knowledge, teaching of others, or giving da'wah that overlooks humility towards one's parents is deficient, largely useless, and ultimately fake. Only Allah knows of the pain that is felt by a father when his son endeavors to belittle his judgment and to convince him that he has no understanding of the new generation, sometimes using contemporary expressions which his father doesn't understand in order to prove to him just how far behind uh, he actually is. Only Allah knows the pain that is felt by mothers when, after their daughters hit their teenage years, make a habit of ridiculing their mother's taste in clothing and say that such and such relative is far more aware of what's trending than she is. To you, it's a passing statement, but to her, it could be a wound that you've inflicted on her. Whilst you may have forgotten, she never forgets those years that she spent going from shop to shop as she carried you, desperately trying to find the best set of clothes for you so that you're never looked down upon by your peers. In this age of mass, mass neglect and defiance of parents, well, you... Revive the Qur'anic obligation of treating your parents with such humility and good treatment while you start <coughs> lowering your wings of humility to them. Imam Ahmed and Imam Makhul would both say, Dutifulness to parents is an expiation for major sins. And I also remember one, one man came to Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, and told him, I murdered someone. Can I still be forgiven? And instead of answering it directly, Ibn Abbas anhu asked, Is your mother still alive? And he said, Yes. And he said, Then inshallah you still can be forgiven. Yani, by being dutiful and obedient to your mother, you can still gain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And foolish is he who thinks that dutifulness to parents is merely about the quantity of material services that one provides them. This is delusion at its worst, for it seems that the materialistic era of ours only gives birth to materialistic perceptions. No, dutifulness to parents is not limited to this, but is far deeper. It is about lowering to them your wing of humility.
thank you for watching and thank you for following this series hope you've benefited and uh, one more time if you've benefited please make dua for them uh, please make dua for us all of us who are involved and Sheikh Ali Hamouda the author and the, the collector of these gems and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to practice as much as we can um, on this newly learned uh, sunan these practices and may this uh, prophetic practices make our lives better in this life and the next. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.